chords of the cloud. Okay. Okay. So welcome back to week seven, um, class UXI 105 Design Technologies. In week seven, we are putting everything together that we learned from the past weeks. And um, so let's go ahead and look at today's agenda. We're gonna do a course overview as always. We are also going to overview week seven. I'm gonna provide you with some resources to use as well as some reminders. And um, again, this live session is being recorded and saved under the web meeting. So you can always go back and reference to our previous recorded videos. Um, also, please keep your video on, but if you have to turn your video off, I totally understand. And um, please have your mic on mute, but if you have to take your mic off of mute, please let me know if there's any issues with viewing the slides, um, please do so. And as always, also, um, we're gonna have some questions to engage in the chat, and you can also connect with your classmates in the chat as well. So our course project, you will choose a, um, an event, which we've already done in the past uh, sessions, we selected an event and also we created some marketing materials um, for you to promote your event. And the goal again is to market an entire event from start to finish and sell your client or viewers on going to your event. So, now that we've been through weeks one all the way through week six, now it's time in week seven to put everything together and we're gonna create some presentations. But before we get into that, um, I would like to know what is your favorite Adobe application that you explored in this course? So um, please drop that in the chat directly to me. And this is just to gauge where you are now that we are at the end of the course. Okay, a lot of Adobe XD. Um, I am, I'm excited because uh, when we first began, a lot of you guys uh, mentioned Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. And um, Adobe XD is our recent uh, class that we explored the Adobe application. So I'm excited that you guys uh, had fun uh, exploring in Adobe XD and definitely it's a skill set that you can use to apply in your design field. So let's do an overview of week seven. This week you will put the finishing touches on your event materials. This means you will go back and make modifications to your design based on feedback that was provided from your instructor, me, and also your peers. Um, that is from your Yellow Dick discussions. Then you'll put everything together in a final project, a presentation where you will discuss your pieces and your design process. So I'm gonna break this down for you guys and you're not going to have to uh, present in our live session. You will submit your presentations. Okay, so uh, week seven objectives, putting it all together. You're gonna revise and refine your promotional materials based on feedback, present a collection of design pieces to stakeholders, um, demonstrate professional communication, refresh your memory on what you read and learned. So just to refresh your memory um, from our overall course, Week one, we did introduction to foundations of design and you submitted your uh, event idea. Week two, you created a logo for your event in Adobe Illustrator. Week three, you created a banner image in Adobe Photoshop. Week four, you designed a promotional flyer in Adobe InDesign. Week five, you created a video ad in Adobe Premiere Pro. And then week six, you created a website landing page in Adobe XD. Now that we are in week seven, you're gonna create a proposal to pitch your event and also create your portfolio. And then week eight, we'll discuss uh, this afternoon for our live session, 7 p.m. 
and we're going to talk about reflection and course wrap up. So let's dive more into the week seven assignment. You'll create a short narrated presentation between three to five minutes showcasing what you design for your event. So you can use PowerPoint, Adobe uh, Premiere Pro, Canva, or a different presentation method as long as you include images of your design. And you will view the outline to help you prepare and record your final presentation. So I'm going to show you um, the outline for your presentation next. Presentation outline. So you'll have a couple of slides and I've also uh, provided you with some uh, ideas for you to incorporate within your slides. So slide one is gonna be about your introduction to your event and your event logo design. So you can dis discuss the specific programs that you use, explain why you chose that event, talk about your target, your target audience from, for your event, including the age group, demographics, location, um, you're going to speak to the event date, the purpose of the event, and the colors for your event logo design. And then you're also going to showcase your logo variations if you created a primary logo, secondary logo, and so on. Next, you are going to, oh, so this is uh, in regards to your event logo. And here's some key concepts that we previously discussed in our previous slides. I just wanted to bring those back so you guys can um, understand how you can break down your slides. So for your event logo, you can discuss, um, does the logo describe the event? That's one of the questions that you can answer. What are your logo colors? How many font options were used in your logo design? And also, did you have any logo variations? Slide two is to showcase your event promotional flyer design. So what you can do is you can discuss the design decisions you made when creating your banner image and overall flyer design. Speak about the colors that you chose for your flyer. Also talk about the different fonts that you selected. Design, uh, describe the layout of the promotional flyer and how the layout works for the type of event that you are promoting. Also mention the call to actions in your event flyer. And this, again, is some key concepts that you can discuss. Um, did your flyer look realistic? You can discuss uh, the colors, textures, and how you were able to match the lighting. Um, and you can also talk about how you incorporated uh, people or a group of people, a person, um, remove, and how you remove the background. That is something that you can speak to because that is a skill set that you can use um, when you are uh, talking about your career and moving into your design field. Also, in regards to your promotional flyer, um, you can discuss uh, why should someone go to your event? Um, how much did it cost? Um, and you including the pricing within your uh, promotional flyer, where the event is and what the dress code is. And also, um, if there were any age restrictions that you considered when you were when you were designing your promotional flyer. Slide three, you will showcase your event video advertisement. So you can discuss why you chose the stock footage and the typography you use for the uh, advertisement. Also, you can explain the correlation between the theme of the event and your concept behind the video ad. You can also describe the background music that you use within your video ad and the purpose for this, uh, for that uh, specific type of audio for your uh, video advertisement and also the overall message that you wanted to convey. So this was just uh, an example of the video advertisement that Cameron used um, and he created for his uh, event. And you can always go back and uh, check out these slides and watch everything through if you just want to get some ideas. So slide four is your landing page. So you're going to showcase the landing page and the wireframe that you created for your event. So you can describe the layout and compositional de uh, decisions. You can also describe the user flow of the uh, landing page, explain how your design compels users to sign up for your event, also, you can mention, excuse me, you can mention the call to actions within your web page. 
uh, showcase your progress from your low fidelity or low fi wireframes and then your high fi or your high fidelity prototype. And so here is um, some concepts that we, uh, we required when we created the website landing page. You had to uh, incorporate your event logo, your banner image, contact information, ticket options, and call to action buttons, your event details and promotional copy. Also, um, your video ad and your navigation menu and footer, and also your newsletter with your submit button. So these are something that you can speak to when creating your slide about your website landing page. And I would love for you to share your sketches. Uh, that is something that is uh, really good to showcase. And so you can show your low fidelity sketch and then you can show your high fi of, of what it looks like at the end when you created your prototype in Adobe XD. So slide five, we're gonna put everything together. So you're gonna put your images of your marketing materials side by side to uh, give a collective portfolio view. Um, what you can do is describe how all of your marketing materials tie together for your event. Utilize mock-ups to make your presentation look more professional. Uh, also, you can showcase the consistency of all of your designs and the look of the event. So I have some examples. Um, but before I show you some examples, if you don't know what a mock-up is, we're definitely going to cover it now. So what is a mock-up? A mock-up or mock-up templates are considered full-size or scale models of a design or device used for demonstration or test purposes. You can display the functionality or the final look of a proposed design. And you can, it is used in various stages of the design process from early concept designs to final production models. So this is uh, an example of a mock-up collection. So here you can see that um, she, in this design, her name is Taylor. So Taylor created uh, various designs and then she used a mock-up. So uh, her design could have been the back and the front of a, um, of a letter, newsletter header um, uh, for a company. Also, she probably created, well, she created these designs front and back for some um, envelopes, business cards, and also her uh, landing page or for her website. So these are something that you can do as well. And I have another example of a mock-up collection. And overall, you're just seeing how it all comes together for the brand. So you can see that they created a logo and they were able to use that logo on the mugs, on their coffee, their drinks. And then also she created some other uh, templates um, and she was able to incorporate that within her mock-up. And this is used when you're a designer, this is used to either present the work that you've previously done um, digitally. Sometimes we create designs that are used for print, but of course, when you're going to uh, say, for instance, your interviews or just to showcase your work and you may not have that print, you can incorporate mock-ups. This gives uh, the person that you're, the, stock, the stakeholders or the person that you're trying to um, um, influence to purchase your design, um, that you are skilled in all of the designs that you are able to create for their brand identity. So how to use a mock-up template. So I do have a, a quick video to show you how to create uh, mock-up templates in Adobe Photoshop. And you can use other sites as well. And I'll have some examples later on, but Adobe Photoshop is really good. And they have so many free mock-up templates that I will also show you um, some sites. And it's easy drag and drop and you'll have your mock-up ready. And then you can also incorporate that in your portfolio. So let's go ahead and check out this video. Um, and in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use mock-up templates with Photoshop. 
Mock-up templates are a great way to demonstrate how your designs look when applied to a real-world context. They add a layer of professionalism and help to sell the viewer on the utility of the design rather than the design itself. And the best part is that they're pretty easy to use, as you'll see in just a minute. You can download these templates for free on sites like Graphic Burger, and there's also sites with premium templates you can purchase if you're looking for something specific. So when you download your template, you should notice that there is a PSD file to open. If you notice here, this one example is logo mockup by PuneDesign.psd. So just go ahead and double click that to open it up with Photoshop, and you should end up with something like this right here. And in the middle of this mockup, you can see this example design. This is what we're going to change. Now, what we're going to be paying attention to here is over here on the right hand side in the layers tab, we're going to be looking for a layer, a layer that's titled with placeholder. Now, it's not always labeled placeholder. Sometimes it's labeled with edit this layer or put your design here. There should be some kind of text that makes it obvious to you that this is the layer you need to be editing. And sometimes it's hidden in these collapsible folders. So just be sure to look through there if you don't see it uh, front and center like I have here in this example. So once you see this layer, once you've identified it, you just have to double click this little icon, the little thumbnail preview. And it'll open up the example design in a new tab, as you can see here. Now, this design represents what's applied to this mock-up right here. So all we have to do is I'm just going to turn off the visibility of this design right here. And I'm going to click here to add a new layer. And just as an example, I'm just going to grab the paintbrush right here. I'm just going to paint something like that. And I'm going to go to File, Save. And if you come over here, you'll notice that has been applied to this template. So let me come back over here. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and create your design right here on the document. If you already have a design that you'd like to apply to this mock-up, let me show you how to do that. So let me get rid of this layer right here. Let me click that little trash can icon. I'm going to bring my folder in here. If you notice, I have this example logo design right here. I'm just going to click and drag this into Photoshop. Now, make sure when you do this that you're using a dot, a dot .png image that has a transparent background, as you can see mine does here. There is a uh, gray or dark gray space within the negative areas of this logo. If you're using a JPEG with like a white border or a white background, it's not going to work as well. So make sure you have a PNG image. I'm going to click and drag this into Photoshop here, and it's going to place it right there. And I want to move this up a little bit. I'm just going to click and drag to move it up. I'm going to hold shift so it locks it onto the vertical axis like that. And then I just want to scale this down a little bit. I'm going to click and drag this handle right here. And then I'm going to hold alt while I'm doing that so it scales it from the center like that. Let me just bring that up a little more, again, holding shift to lock it onto the uh, vertical axis. And once I'm happy with the size and the placement, I'm just going to press enter on the keyboard to place it. And I'll go to file, save. And then if you come back over here, you should see the logo design has been applied to this paper mock up here. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. That's how easy it is to make your designs have a real world look and feel to them using these mock up templates. Now, if you don't have. All right you guys so um it is that simple so basically you're going to just drag and drop click the smart object um click the smart object drag and drop your design within that uh smart object click x hit save and you'll be able to view your mock-up so i will have some more um information on how to use the mock-up a little bit more detail in regards to it but um, I want to move on to the next slide, which is websites that you can find your free mock-up templates. So here are some websites that I like to use, um, but there are several others. But um, to go over, you have Mock-up World, Free Pick, Pixadun, um, Graphic Burger, Place It. Um, Place It is one that has free, but they also have in some of these websites too. They also have premium, so uh, definitely just make sure that you click free and there are plenty of options. Um, mock up is Mock Plus, Unblast, and then this other website here, ls.graphics uh, backslash free mockups. So um, it's really good websites, definitely check them out and I'll leave all of these resources for you within the slide and also I'll create an announcement with all of these mock-ups as well. So you can go and try them out. And when you go to their websites, um, they do provide you, once you download a mock-up, um, the file itself might come in a compressed folder and they will provide you with um, instructions on how to use the mock-up. So let's view some example portfolios. 
So when you're creating your portfolio, you can either use Adobe Portfolio or Portfolio Loom. Um, portfolio Loom is something that uh, Brown University prefers, but you can use uh, other portfolio platforms as well. Um, not just Adobe Portfolio, you can use Behance. Dribble also has one as well. So I will also um, put some more of those resources available for you. Um, but here are some examples that I would like for us to go over um uh to view some portfolio so remember the lady that we mentioned earlier taylor this is her site and how she was able to put her mock-up uh, designs together in her portfolio so we're on to her site and this is where she uh, covers brand identity specifically um so this is the design that we initially looked at. And she was able to take her logo that she created, she added it to a pin. And also um, viewing some of these links, uh, these are really good to uh, incorporate within your own portfolio. Um, she gave some description about the brand itself and what she created, what the brand was looking for. And um, she created some presentation folders um, also, she spoke a little bit in, uh, about the website that she created. So that's something that you can do as well. And uh, she really just did the, the entire design. She exported that design. Um, and then she used this mock-up of a laptop. So that's one way that you can um, create your design. And let's see. Now that we reached the end of our week seven presentation, I know we ended a little early, but we are at the end of our um, course. So we don't have too much to cover other than this presentation. And then again, our session for week eight, which will be this afternoon, we'll just discuss um, makeup work and um, if you have any questions in regards to the course overall. So do you guys have any questions for me? No? Um, if you have any questions in regards to the portfolio, please reach out. I will definitely help you. Um, I like to use Canva. Um, you can use Adobe. Um, you can do, use a, a PowerPoint to do your presentation, whichever you prefer, whichever you're most comfortable with. Um, I do not, I'm not gonna dock any points if you use, uh, anything outside of that, whichever that you're comfortable with, but I do wanna see your faces on camera or just your voice. So whichever you prefer. And I do want to see that you're going in depth on um, the different slides, all of the information that was covered and definitely consider the key concepts in, uh, to include in your portfolio. So if you don't have any questions, um, and if you do have any questions, definitely reach out. But if you don't have any questions, that is the end of our presentation for today. So I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in our next live session. All right. Bye.